This is the latest and greatest showcase of PopOS new Cosmic Desktop environment. And it's something that many in the Linux community have been eager to try out. It comes with the promise to feature a streamlined experience with lots of customization options, as well as incredible tiling and window management functionalities to improve productivity, your gaming experience and everything in between. In today's video, we're going to check out how the desktop environment looks and feels, how it differs from other desktop experiences and what you can expect from it if you want to try it out right now. And without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So Cosmic, a desktop environment that has been around for quite a long time. In previous releases, Cosmic has been built upon GNOME, which is kind of obvious if you view them side by side. The problem with that was that Cosmic wants customization and GNOME doesn't really offer that, while also breaking extensions with basically every update. Given that this streamlined vision doesn't really fit on the roadmap of System76, they decided to split from GNOME altogether and build a new desktop environment from the ground up. All of this already happened a few years back, so fast forward to today, the Cosmic Alpha released about two weeks ago with a special PopOS ISO, but also on other distros as well. You can follow the link in the description to learn more. Now initial impressions of Cosmic are quite good. Like the older GNOME based version, you still have the usual top bar, which gives you quick access to workspaces or virtual screens, the application menu, a calendar, as well as the usual quick settings on the right. What I really like here is that you automatically get a button for quickly changing the keyboard layouts, but it also shows you open background apps like Steam, Telegram and similar. If you're coming from Windows, macOS or even another desktop environment like KDE Plasma, me mentioning this might seem odd. But the most common desktop environment GNOME does not have this at all at the moment. Yet yeah, there is the background app functionality, but it's very limited and also only shows flat packs and not system apps. So that's pretty good. At the bottom we get a dock, where you can pin your favorite apps, but also access your workspaces, app menu and the app launcher, which is also the default for pressing the Windows, Meta or Super key. You can compare it to KRunner on Plasma, and its main functionality is to find applications or interact with some of them dynamically. Now unfortunately it doesn't seem to work with directories or files just yet. But hey, this isn't a feature that I expect from a desktop environment alpha anyway. Now, two things that I currently don't like about this implementation is the redundancy in buttons. Like, why are the workspace and application menu accessible both here and here? And another thing, if you open the workspace menu, then clicking on the desktop or different menu icons does not close it. Now this might seem like a minor thing since you can close by pressing escape or just on the button again, but it is something that I came across a couple of times during testing. Moving on, let's talk about the settings and customization, since this is essentially one of the reasons on why it's being built in the first place. Wallpapers. What I really like about wallpapers on Cosmic is that you can very easily create a slideshow based on a selected directory. Like why isn't this already a thing on other desktop environments? It's very odd. Another thing that Cosmic handles really well is changing the top panel and dock at the bottom. For example, I can easily choose a different position for my panel. Now some orientations might look a bit weird, so let me quickly explain how docks and panels work in Cosmic. On other desktop environments like KDE Plasma, you just get one panel that sort of looks like Windows 10 by default. Now in contrast to Windows, Plasma allows you to add a second, third or however many more panels you need. Now on Cosmic you get exactly two panels to work with. So essentially, even though these two are named differently, side by side you can see that they have the exact same settings. So what you can do is to remove redundant entries, make both the panel and dock into a taskbar or simply disable one altogether and rearrange the applets to a traditional Windows-like design. Looking at it from this perspective, I wonder if it even makes sense to split them into separate categories, since if you move the panel to the bottom and you disable the dock, if you then want the top bar again, it could happen that you mix these two up and then the menu icons are just wrong since the dock is now on top. Like I would just combine the panel and dock settings and label them with numbers or something. Kind of like with multiple displays. Anyway, let's move on to customizing the visuals. 
Compared to KDE Plasma, you can't use custom themes, but you can change the accent colors, which affect some text, icons and the border around active windows, and you can also change the background color altogether, which can make your desktop look either very good or quite horrific. Now, during my livestream on Sunday, I discovered that certain brightness values don't seem to work, since it causes some issues with the text. Now personally, I also would like to completely remove the active window border altogether, since I don't really like it having an accent color around it. But the problem is that Cosmic doesn't seem to have any window shadows whatsoever. So if you do deactivate it, you don't really know which window is currently active. Now it's okay on its thinnest value, but it's also not the way how I would like it to behave. Okay, now let's move on to something that Cosmic is seemingly most wanted for. It's tiling support. You can enable tiling via a panel applet and also choose what the default mode is for a new workspace. As soon as you toggle it, all of your windows get dynamically adjusted in size to fit on your desktop. With your mouse or keyboard shortcuts, you can select windows and move them into groups, which are then customizable as well. You can rearrange the desktop as you like and even stack windows, which is essentially like switching through tabs in a web browser. Now I'm no tiling expert and also not really a fan to completely dynamically move my windows around with my keyboard. But this implementation doesn't feel bad at all. Moving the windows around and adjusting them in size was very easy. And besides getting used to the navigation, I could set up a layout I liked really quickly. It's also nice having the option to tile on only one workspace, while others have regular floating windows. For games, for example, that open in a window instead of full screen, this helps a lot to not mess up your desktop. It's really nice. As for the rest of your settings, you can of course switch the orientation of workspaces if you prefer a horizontal view, you can adjust your display's resolution and refresh rate, and unlike some other desktop environments, it also has fractional scaling enabled out of the box. So that's quite nice for devices that have a smaller or less common resolution. You can of course also switch audio devices, choose a different power plan, which can be important for using hybrid graphics on some laptops, adjust your keyboard layout, edit and add shortcuts, though still a bit complicated in some places, and customize your mouse settings. Now what didn't work for me at all is the user account menu, which is kind of a problem if you are a beginner that wants to change their password. Now yes, it's an alpha, but still kind of important. Okay, so settings wise, we essentially get the bare minimum. There is no VRR support, no online accounts integration, no accessibility options, and a lot of other functionalities that are still missing. And this also applies to essentially every new app that ships with the desktop environment. They look incomplete in some places, are missing crucial features, and are just lacking a lot of polishing. But that is not what this alpha is about. If we take a look deeper, we see that Cosmic and its toolkit LibCosmic is not all that bad and it's also already sort of dynamic. Sure, there are some bugs here and there, the software store doesn't have a page for active downloads yet and the calendar doesn't work due to no compatible app being installed. But the core with window management and all that works. I even tried to use Blender for a bit and even though it was running in an accelerated virtual machine, the desktop environment itself didn't crash at all. Sure, the app did when trying to access some specific resources, so it's not perfect, but very impressive nonetheless. So basically, even though it's of course still very bare bones, the foundation is here and it works surprisingly well. I of course wouldn't recommend it for daily use yet, but it's already quite interesting what System76 is cooking up. Its philosophy to bring more customization into a more streamlined desktop is admirable and I actually cannot wait to really give it a go once we start getting some more advanced features. It's probably still gonna take a few years though. So what do you think about Cosmic? Are you excited or did you already try it out on actual hardware? Please let us know in the comment section below. If you've liked this video then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.